And then, you know, you got old and your back gave out. <laughs> I did not get old. Um, My back did. Hello and welcome. You are here with me and with Donnie Grissom. Hey y'all! Donnie is an estate jeweler and I am a jewelry designer. One of our viewers, Gin Cat, requested we do a video on how we got into the jewelry industry. And when we first met each other, neither of us was in the jewelry industry. So that has been a progression. And Donnie went into the jewelry industry first. When I first met him, he was selling antiques. And that's how we met. I purchased a painting from him, I purchased some furniture from him, and we have another video on how we met. So I will link that up here if you would like that story. And Donnie was selling antiques. So how did you get from selling antiques to selling jewelry? Well, first of all, the two sort of link together because of design. Right. And the love for beautiful things, mm -hmm. like my friend Jill. Aww. <laughs> and so I was always attracted to beautiful things, number one. But I sort of left the antique business because we had a lot of furniture and it was really, really heavy. And my partner at the time had moved into more of dealing in estate jewelry. I learned that from him and it was easier to pick up mm -hmm. than a sideboard or a secretary or a hunt board or something like that. So from there, and then you started learning about jewelry design mm -hmm. and the different periods which is very similar to antiques. I mean, it's, it's different, of course, but it, there is a correlation there. There really them. is, because in, in any sort of design, whatever was going on in the world affects the design of everything. Right. And I actually have a series on this in relation to jewelry, the different periods of jewelry, but it affected the fashion, it affected the architecture, it affected the way that a magazine was designed, right. it affected fonts, it affected everything. Right. So there right. would be a connection yeah. between those. Well, and then, once, you, once we started and you'd learn more, and then I'll, you just, all your time then goes into it. And the difference is, there's nothing like watching someone try on a bracelet, try on a necklace. There's a connection with jewelry that isn't with anything else, I think, is the thing. Jewelry you, becomes more personal. It's much more yeah. personal. And if you don't think it is, you know, because people say, oh, I'm really connected to my handbag or I'm really connected to whatever. If you get mad at somebody, have you ever thrown your handbag across the room at them? I have seen people take off their wedding ring and fling it at somebody. <laughs> That's there, so it, true. It, you are connected to that jewelry. It has meaning in a way that nothing else does. Well, I, th I think it probably has the meaning just because often when you're buying pieces, I'm, unlike you, because you just bought like crazy, but most people when they're buying, they're, it's an anniversary, it's a birthday, you know, somebody did something bad and they bought you a gift, and, but there's memories. So with I'm going to tell you now that I was always celebrating. And so Donnie, well, Donnie would do these shows and he would do them twice a year. And that's usually when I would buy from him. He lived relatively nearby, but that's when I would buy from right. him. And it is true when people buy jewelry, they're usually in a great mood and they're buying something um, to celebrate something. And it could be an occasion or mm -hmm. just themselves. And I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you know that my elder son is autistic. Right. He is classified very low functioning autistic and he's nonverbal. I feel very privileged to have been able to raise him and I love him and it was a lot of work. It was a whole lot of work. That was it. And so I couldn't do things that other people could do, like travel. I didn't get to go out a lot. I was tied to the house. Um, there, there was just a lot that was more difficult. And so I would really prepare my life and get everything in order for those two days when that show was right. there. And so I was just happy to be out. And, and so I would spend my money on jewelry because I couldn't spend it on things like experiences. I couldn't go, you know, it just on wasn't- On vacation. No, you couldn't I couldn't go, yeah. Mm -mm. You, you weren't leaving your child mm -mm. to go to Europe for the, for the, for the summer or mm -mm. for two weeks. Or, and yeah. I couldn't take my child because he mm -hmm. was having such intense uh, therapies and intense things. And, you know, he, we did travel with him, but it was to Disney World, you know, it, because they were set up for special needs. We just didn't have the carefree life that a lot of people do, even with children. And so, for me, I was so... So, going to the antique shows to see mm -hmm. us, and other, that was vacation. That was a vacation for That me. was a vacation for you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And also, I cared very much about who I was buying from. Right. That had a lot to do with everything. So if there was something in somebody else's case, and there was something in yours, and I liked them right. equally as right. well or whatever, I would always 
buy from you. And we appreciate that. Yeah. And I well, Can you do that again? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Actually, I've tried to buy things from you that you wouldn't let me buy because the problem is uh, uh, now he doesn't want to make any oh, money on me. And you become friends. Yeah. And then, because you know, a lot of people now, I'm usually very honest with customers when they come oh, up always. and if they try something on and it doesn't look right, I will tell them, yeah, that's not for you. Right. Yeah, that's not. not right. I don't need, to, I do need to make the sale, mm -hmm. but it's not about the sale. It's, it's about a, that relationship. A, and in the state world, you buy what you love. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, you, you want to love the person that does also taking the piece, mm -hmm. but you want it, you want it, you want to love it on them. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't look good, you have to tell them, you know, let's try something else. Mm -hmm. And and, that and that's way, what happened to her. So then she stopped buying. No, that's not what happened. Oh, so and, and honestly, the only reason I, I stopped is because I started uh, designing my own jewelry. So it made more sense for me to focus on that. Right, yeah. And then for me getting into the jewelry industry, it was a different path, but Donnie was very much tied into it. I was in a different business. I owned a business and it was a very techie thing. I actually have an engineering degree and I was in a very techie business. You know, when I had the children, I worked more half time, but I kind of stayed involved. Eventually I sold my shares in that business and I was able to do whatever I wanted to do. I had always loved jewelry. I got to the point when we became friends that I would actually, when he was traveling the country doing shows, Sometimes I would just fly to where he was, yeah. mm -hmm. or ride with him. That was so much fun. It was. We got to yeah, do it. Yeah, that again. was fun. And I would just work there in his booth just because I loved it. I loved being around Donnie. I loved being around jewelry. I loved. And you were good with it. Yeah, probably. I mean, you would. You you did the same thing that I would do with a customer. You'd put it on them and say, you know what? Let me. Then you would, it would work. So you would reach in the case and say, I think this will look better on you. Yeah. And you'd reach in and pull it out. And it was true. I mean, you knew what was working for people and what wasn't working. There are some fun stories there. There's one story I'll, I'll say about that. There was this woman, she was standing farther away and she was admiring this beautiful, you had this beautiful opal carved piece. And she was admiring it and she was standing back and she was very demure. She was wearing a black dress and she, you know, she, was, she looked elegant but she was very demure and shy. I pulled it out of the case and I said, Do you, would you like to see this? And she just shook her head no. And I said, you can come look at it. You know, and I got the tray out and I put it out. She shook her head no. And I said, listen, it doesn't matter if you can afford it or not. It doesn't matter. You clearly love this piece. Just come play with it. And she just shook her head no and walked away. And then do you remember what happened after that? I don't. So a man came up, he said, I will take that piece. And he was younger than she was. He was a lot younger, maybe her son, or I don't know who he was, but I'll take that piece. I think he was an employee. I'll take that piece. And so Donnie pulled it out and he said, no, I want to buy it from her. Now I remember the whole and story. And I said, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's all Donnie's. I'm, I'm not working on commission or, you know, it's, he said, we want, I want to buy it from you. And I was like, okay. You know, I don't even know how to write And I was card, okay right? with that. <laughs> so he hands me this card, and it was heavy, and it was, I think, black, and there was no name on it at all. And I said, mm -hmm. what's the story with this? I don't know if this is going to even go through. Like, what does this right. mean when you get a card with no name on it? And I don't know if we called somebody over. I don't know what we did, but they just whispered, oh, don't, a, don't you worry about right, that card. Right, take the card. Take the card. Just run it. Just, yeah, and so... We did, and she bought that, and it was for her. She bought that piece. She never mm -hmm. looked at it. We don't know who she was. Obviously, she had money. She had some, right. some servant. It went, or, you know, or, I don't know. It could have been her son. I don't know who it was. It's interesting how there's a connection sometimes even when it doesn't feel like there is. In the expression, of the, I think, in the state jewelry business, I think people make connections with that. Yes. I think they make a connection with the state jewelry more than they do with the new pieces. No. You so, don't think so? so no, that's okay. okay so that's, well, that's because I'm in the estate that's world. That's because yeah. you're in the estate world. Yeah. So a designer is very connected to whatever they're designing, and then the people sometimes do collect from a specific designer because there is a connection. Well, that's true. Yeah, and so the very right. much so. Right. And I'll also, there will also be oftentimes a connection between the designer and the store that's carrying it, and. That's another important connection because if they understand the pieces and know the designer and appreciate the message, then they can convey it. Right. So there are people that I don't even know who are collectors 
where there is a connection. That's why trunks shows are so much fun. Is I get to go and meet some of the people, and they're you know they come up and they're wearing all my pieces, and then they're you know it's it's fun. So now I got into the jewelry industry. I started by helping him, and then when I was trying to figure out what am I going to do next, I loved the idea of jewelry and of designing jewelry, because I had done some things on the side. I'd help you rework right. a couple of pieces. Right. And you design, you design your own pieces mm -hmm. at the time, not for sale. Mm -hmm. These are personal pieces yeah. that you were designing for yourself. Right. Uh, but I didn't feel like I had permission to be a designer. I didn't feel, you know, my background was in engineering. I just, you know, it's that thing of where you feel unworthy, that mm -hmm. imposter right. syndrome thing. I just didn't feel like I had the right to do it somehow. You are the one who... Right really helped walk me through that. Well, I, you had a great eye. I mean, you did. You all, when you were buying the state pieces, you didn't. Julie didn't buy just anything plain, anything that other people had. You weren't looking for just a pair of gold earrings. You weren't looking for a plain gold bracelet. You were looking for unusual mm -hmm. and one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And it was the same today, not only in Jill's design today, it's the exact same, but also in the furniture that you buy today, mm -hmm. your home, all different. Mm -hmm. Great eye. But I do think that comes from engineering background. It might. I think it was instilled to me, in me from a very young age. Even when I was very young, I liked to move the furniture around in my room. I liked to display little things in my room. I just always appreciated beauty and design mm -hmm. and the way things were. You know, I can't help it. I'll go into a business or I'll go to a town and I'll think about how this could be redesigned. Mm -hmm. I remember just like going in to buy paint and watching the guy walk around this thing and go and do all of this stuff. And I thought, what they need to do is cut a hole in the wall, do a hopper, you know. Right. I mean, I'm just always doing that. <laughs> I'm redesigning <laughs> systems, I'm redesigning everything. So I think it is sort of instilled in me. But you had told me, Jill, there isn't anybody who knows more than you do. And that's not exactly right. true. But you, you know, you did say you can But design. you do study. I study. I, yeah, so, yeah. I studied the different periods of jewelry. I just studied the different stones and all of that. And I just did it because I loved it. It was just a hobby that I did because I loved. I knew a lot about design and the history of design and I wanted to come up with a look that was uniquely me because the designers I like the most or the pieces I like the most, they are making a statement. Even though I loved and appreciated all kinds of jewelry, that editing, editing down and taking the time to figure out my own look my own look, my own story, and distilling that down. I spent a couple of years just doing that before I really came out with a line. I really wanted to make sure that I had my own look. And I wanted my jewelry to fit into a jewelry store, to look right in a jewelry store, but not like anybody else's. I knew a lot of the older designers and the older periods, but then I also started looking at what are people creating right now. I want to make sure I don't look like any of those people. Right. Even though I appreciate some of those people greatly, they have their look and I want to have mine. Right. So that is how we got started. So you really helped me a lot oh to make God. that decision. That makes me feel so important. You, you are important. I am important. I, am. I mean, he really literally held my hand and just said, you can do this. I knew that Jill, once she starts something, she completes it to the end. And I knew that you would take it all the way. Yeah, like this video every day that I'm doing for the oh year God, 2019. Oh God, that's insane though. I don't know if it makes any sense, <laughs> I don't know if it's helping, but I said I'm going to do it, and by golly, I'm going to do it. it. This video was requested by Gin Cat. If you would like to see Donnie and I talk about a specific subject, just let us know what that is. We would love to have a chat with you about it. While you're here, please subscribe. We'd love to see you again. Ready? Bye, Bye for now. now.